as of now, the current four-team playoff system is in play through the year 2025. But you put your ear to the ground, you can hear the stampede of expansion growing. So how do we grow this beyond four teams? Matthew. Well, I'm going to tell you how we grow it. But, Coach, first of all, I love the passion with the current four-team playoff. But here's my proposal now for an eight-team playoff. First, we are going to take the Power Five Conference champions. They will have an automatic bid. Then you take the three at-large teams selected by a committee. Now, the one caveat, the highest-ranked group of five team is guaranteed a spot if they go undefeated. Right now, currently, that team would be SMU. Now, you take these eight football teams, you reseed them, one through eight, and the four top seeds are going to host a quarterfinal playoff game at home. I want to re repeat that. They're going to host a home playoff game. Great for the fans and great for college football. Guys... Do you like it? All right, Matt, let, let me just bring up a, a couple of things. The most special and unique part of college football is the importance of the regular season. It's the one differentiating factor this sport has. It's the most uh, unique and important regular season in all of sport. As soon as you give an automatic bid to a conference champion, every non-conference game means zero. And you're devaluing what I think is very special about the sport. So that would, that's where I would start, is that auto bids for a conference champ, I would immediately be a big vote for no. Why? <laughs> you, can't, you can't just <laughs> hey, honestly no, believe listen, that. Listen, I honestly believe listen, that. I, I, Coach, would you schedule anybody if you knew that all you had to do was win your conference can, championship? I would be all over the Mac schools right now. Exactly. I would... But but I want to say something. What we do in the NFL, and I don't want to go all over the place, but you play for home field advantage yes. in an NFL playoff. How yes. important is that? We've all been Huge. in NFL playoffs. This system would allow for these teams, it would make every regular season game matter because you're playing to get a home field advantage in that quarterfinal. You want to go to Ohio State in mid-December and play a quarterfinal playoff game? You don't want to if nope. you're a lower seed. I don't. I'm just saying. <laughs> you don't want that cold weather. I don't want to go to that cold <laughs> Again, it, it comes down to your point, Coach, scheduling. If we can get uniform scheduling, we're in a better place in college football. So if we get that uniform scheduling, how do we actually schedule an 18 playoff? And we're going to take a look at how the calendar is this year, and it actually fits in quite nicely. Quite nicely, in fact. Uh, and, Coach, I took it into some of your considerations, right? We're worried about, obviously, the student-athlete, you know, final exams, those sorts of things that are going on. Joel, you mentioned player safety. Yeah. So we're only extending the season really one more game for two teams. But when you look at the schedule that I've put together, okay, we don't change the conference championship weekend. It stays the same. We don't change the national championship. In fact, we only add in one more game, one additional week. We've got games being played, a quarterfinal game on December 21st, and then December 28th. And why that's significant is it gives you two weeks to prepare for that quarterfinal game. But more importantly, for the coaches, you have an opportunity now to go, to go recruit during that early signing period. And then for the student athletes, they have their final exams. They'll have a couple weeks to prepare for the game, but obviously plenty of time to prepare for some of those exams too. So in the end of it, you end up having four buys if you're playing in the national championship in a year like this year where most teams have two unless they played in week zero. They had three, oh. but I think you can see my point. There's a ton of space, ton of time for the players to recover and prepare, prepare for exams. If I had uh, a nickel for every hour we spent, the AFCA, but everybody understand the presidents run the show. And college presidents are all about the academics and the welfare of student athlete. And so, for example, when they say extend the season and start playing potentially a 16th game and you move it on the back end, you're now getting into mid-January and the semesters of our, so you're going to have people playing in those games. They're already not enrolled in school. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how a well, president not, Again, will. they're not in this schedule, I know, right? I know. So the schedule that you showed <laughs> was very intriguing when I first saw that. The one thing, there's two, there's two dates. Number one is the uh, early signing period. That's the third week in the third Wednesday in December. And a team, for example, Ohio State plays in the Big Ten Championship game, you've already lost one week. So you can say that uh, th those three weeks, when you play in a conference championship game, those teams are one week less uh, you have one week less recruiting than the other teams, and that's I mean, you guys that, go ahead. That, that survive, all right. I mean, you guys that hurts you so well. bad, Coach. Hey, hey, hey guys, sorry, sorry I can't come visit. I'm we're, about we're, to play for a championship. Be, come to Indianapolis, okay. come see us. So we'll be in the gone. big tension. So move on. Yeah. <laughs> the second thing is finals week, and all of a sudden now that that's legit. And I'm just telling you that unless we take that consideration, and you can say, well, the other sports, other sports, I just. I've been around it long enough that that's one of these. If a president thinks, which means for your non-baseball guys, that's out. <laughs> Unless you take in consideration that these student-athletes have time. So now you're going to take away their Christmas. You're going to take away 
uh, the opportunity to get ready for finals and all that. But the way Brady's schedule, that when I first saw that earlier in the week, that is very intriguing. And I am at, I, I think people are going to actually look at that that have an influence into uh, uh, extending this thing to an eight game. I'm going to close and let you guys go. Uniform scheduling, number one. Yep. That has to be addressed. Nine yeah. conference game, eight. Doesn't matter. But just make it equal. And then power five, home and home, which you're starting to see that already permeate through the scheduling across the country. That's the right thing to do. Subjectivity. Minimize. You're always going to have some. But minimize it. Don't have people, that, you know, journal, and I'll do respect journalists, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, the look test tastes better. Well, I would say, who they play before? You know, the, the, when you play tough schedules, players get hurt. Right. And subjectivity. And well, and then imagine, imagine someone, you know, imagine, imagine they're saying that when Ohio State, we're down to our third string quarterback. Keep them out. Who's making that decision? Yeah. Take subjectivity out of it. It's simple one or loss on the field against a tough team. Well, Matt, I do like your idea of home field advantage because you do have to find a way to incentivize those conference champs. But to wrap this up from a player's perspective, this is all we wanted was to be able to play in a true playoff system. And I think if we can find a way to get to a true playoff system, we will even see less guys sitting out bowl games. Yep. We go to eight teams? That's Let's strong. do it. I hope so. One way, down, everybody so. else is up. That was strong when he just said, don't lose that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Players want I, it. I really, yeah. that was a Fans feeling. want it. Alumni yeah. want it. I don't know. TV, TV wants it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's yeah. Joel, I'm sorry, Joel you want to go to... Joel Clad doesn't want yeah, Joel, it. Yeah, Joel doesn't. That's Joel. That's, <laughs> that's, that's another that's game the mad platter. Joel, we get another game for you. You know, I'm looking out for the best interest of college football. I'm looking out for you. Joel just came here to wreck shop today. That's what All right, so... Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.